boys and girls, welcome to Out of Bounds, a new uh, Irish American football podcast. And I can hear you already saying as if there's not enough of those already, but this is different. We're going to take a, a fresh look at all things American football in Ireland. Uh, it's going to be completely unbiased. It's going to be unfiltered. It might even potentially be a bit unhinged at times, but that's okay. Bear with us. Uh, we are two veterans of the Irish American Football League, and we're here to bring you a new perspective, I suppose, on the uh, on the wide landscape of American football in Ireland, focusing on the league a little bit, but kind of talking talking about about everything. And I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. John Romanowski, my my uh, conspirator in this new endeavor. Coach, how are you? Good to be here with you. Uh, absolutely, pal. It's great to be here. And uh, I don't know if we're going to come up with anything new because I'm an old dog and it's hard to teach them new tricks. But uh, I think that there's a good spot for some talk maybe from someone that has the experience that you and I have and maybe it's a different conversation than some of those other great shows that are out there because I listen to them all so mm. we're just throwing our throw let's throw our hat in the ring here a little bit and see how it goes if nobody listens it doesn't really matter anyway it's a night out right uh, and well, I, I I would be hopeful that a couple of people at least would, would tune in. We, we might get a bit of traction. Like it definitely is. It's a great it's a great time to be involved and to be to be I suppose talking about American football in Ireland because it really is on the rise, uh, especially with some of the recent developments we saw in the greater scheme of of of, of American football in Ireland. And it's it's great to see those developments that are having an impact on our league. I mean, um, I was at the the Rebels and UCD game there last weekend and. There was supporters on both sides, you know. I mean, there was a great turnout for the for the rebels. There was a, a great turnout for UCD, and a couple of years ago, that's something that you might not have seen is actual fans on the sideline. Um, so you know, just even little developments like that. I mean, it, it, it's it's great to see. So I think let's let's touch first on the the fixtures last weekend before we look ahead to this week's fixtures, and of course, um. That Rebels UCD game was exceptionally high scoring. I mean, eighty two points. I mean, what what did you make of the scores in general from the weekend? Um, I think, yeah, eighty two points is eighty two points. Now it's not. Uh, this league is no stranger to uh, high scoring affairs. Generally and historically, I think this league is used to one team scoring quite high, the other maybe not scoring very high. But uh, this was definitely a different kind of kind of cool uh, mm. for, for the league. And I think it's, there's, if you look at the division, there's two teams that on, on paper before the season started were, I think most people in the know would say are hands down predicted to be uh, mm. head and shoulders above the rest in, and whether you believe it or not, I mean, I think that's the general consensus of what's mm. going on. And there's a reason for that. You know, those are, those are two high powered teams that always bring numbers uh, and are playing and coaching and, and practicing really, really well. And they, that's, hopefully that's something that can echo around the league. But th like 82 points still tells me that uh, as, just as a, as a coach, uh, 82 points for me means there's some high-powered stuff going on at those skill positions, but I'm a guy who lives and dies in the trenches and – there definitely had to have been, I wasn't there, you were, but there definitely had to have been something about what was going on in the trenches. If there was some time for quarterbacks or, or, or running plays, I don't know, but 82 points are a lot of points to score. And that, to me, that's telling of what's going on with those eight, nine guys that are up front. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I mean, from, from observing the game and, and being there, both, uh, both quarterbacks, I mean, Aaron Mooney for UCD, Ty Henry for the Rebels, both very talented in, in their own right, of course, indiv as individual individual players. But it all comes down to, like you say, having that time to sit in the pocket and and pick out your receivers, and that's exactly what they did. I mean, it was Mooney to Donovan or or Henry to to Johnson. I mean, so there's there's definitely high powered offense, but you know, eighty two points also says that some improvement potentially needed on the defense side of the ball. I mean, there's one play in particular that stands out to me. And that was the running back for the Rebels, um, Andre Barlafa. He, he, he he's a he's a running back, and he came out of the backfield, ran a route, and caught a ball between two UC two UCD defenders, literally ripping it away from them. So, 
to be able to do that in double coverage says there might still have been a bit of rust on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, that's still pretty sick, man. <laughs> like, you know, without how you look at it, that's a pretty and that's, sick that's, that's sounding. That's no, knock, that's no knock, knock on him at all. He's a very talented player. That's but, you a know, sick just... sound to play. <laughs> I, um, again, um, you know, these are two teams that uh, I know, I don't know where it's, how it's been the, around the rest of the country, but I know being in Dublin too myself that, you know, the weather has been a huge factor uh, the last month. And um, I don't know how pitches were for training. And these are all real problems that we have in this country. Mm. You know, I don't know how pitches were for training and how things were for training. So, so, you know, if they lost any sessions, again, UCD maybe not so bad because of the, the turf that they're on. I, I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, they probably just need – they needed to get that under their belt. And, yeah. But that – it has to tell the rest of the league, look out, because yeah. the, the two teams that you said you thought on paper were going to be the ones head and shoulders above the rest. Right now, if they're week one, everybody has to be looking at them, you know, in two ways, saying, yes, A, yes, they are, but B, each team gave up 40 points. So how can yeah. we try to capitalize on that when we meet them? And it was definitely, I mean, it was definitely one of the... I mean, we've, we've seen some great battles between these two teams in recent years, obviously trading Shammer Bowls uh, in back-to-back -back seasons. And it, it definitely had the feeling of a classic about it. Um, but let, let's look at some of the other fixtures as well. And the other one that jumps out at me was UL taking on newly promoted UL coming up from, from Division 1 last year, uh, taking on Cork Admirals, who are veterans of, this, of the Premier Division at this stage. I mean, they're season semi-finalists. Obviously, yeah, they haven't gotten uh -huh. over. Yep. Yeah, go ahead, coach. Sorry, you were just breaking up on me there quick. Um, yeah, look, uh, Limerick may be coming up, but we know that if they're on the come up, that's a that's that's could be dangerous. You know, this yeah. is a team that you know in the last they're, they're no they're no strangers to this. Play and their coaches, coaches that are on that squad were more than likely players that were, you know, around during that those times. So they know what it takes to play, even though it's changing and it's getting better. They know what it takes to play. So if they they if they can get that ethos and that culture into into those guys, then then they're not just because they just came up doesn't mean that they're not. A team that can be, can't be competitive immediately coming up here, I, in my opinion, you know, I I, I do think that it's got to be tough for Cork and their coaching staff to, and their players to to know that they were up by 24 points yeah. and that happened to them, and not so much that they, you know, as much as they allowed 24 points to be scored, but that they didn't get another ball across the goal line. Um, that's got to be hurting. That's got to be smarting them. Uh, uh, but I think that it, right now it comes down to the, the, the guys on that team and, and, you know, there's a great staff there if they can get them back. But that Limerick team, is, to me, like, they're, they're, they're a good squad, man. They're, they're, they're going to be all right, I think. You know, there's, there's no given, I don't think, as to that, the bottom of the Premier Division. It could be one of any and that's yeah. only because i think that there are a few that are that are worthy of really trying to break into that top four into the top two eventually and build on that this year hopefully but uh you know bike the vikings got to be scaring a few people you know, you know the vikings are got if they can they, they have a test again this week and we can get into that but um you know that, that that was impressive i heard it was you know and from what i understand historically those two teams there's no uh that's no real love affair, you know, they're, they're because they're, they're natural rivals there, you know, they're close to each other. So they're natural rivals. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's, that's could turn into a very interesting uh, uh, a battle in the, in the future with, between those two teams. That'll be fun to watch. Considering how close the game, I mean, I was talking to Liam Ryan afterwards and he was telling me how they almost actually caused an upset. I mean, that game almost went to the Vikings they missed an extra point on their la on their final touchdown. I mean, imagine it, it was like the the Italian match in the Six Nations a few months a few weeks ago, where they almost beat France by 
and they had to they had the penalty go off to go off the uprights. So I can imagine the drama that was happening down in Limerick when they were lining up for that extra point. And as you say, another t- tough test this weekend with the Trojans, five time national champions coming down to Limerick. I mean, now we've seen from last season the Trojans don't really travel that well, I don't think. Um I mean even the Minotaurs gave them a tough go over the last season. So it'll be interesting to me. I think that is the that's the game to to watch this weekend is, is the is the, the Vikings and the Trojans. Yeah, well I mean Limerick the Vikings definitely are getting uh the best sort of trial by fire as far as jumping up into the Premier Division in that, you know, um the the court game was was on paper, again, was meant to be a loss to them, and they battled back, and they got they didn't get the L in that game, and now you know the next step for them is again a team that is in that process of that rebuild for for a couple of years, and they're they're at a period now where if if I'm the coach there after this amount of time, like I'm ready for these guys to make a move, and they need to start to. They really want to get to that dominant position again and playing good football. Uh, so, but they, it's a long travel. Uh, nobody's going to travel well traveling that far. Mm. Um, Five hours historically you were from Belfast to Limerick. To, yeah, but historically, Belfast is one of the most best in shape teams in the country. You know, they mm. they they've been taking this seriously for a long time now, and and you know they they've done really well with with you know location and they they do good with recruiting from what i i see on on social media they're they're one of the it's probably the best social media in the country i mean they they do so well to to get that out there so again on paper you know they're ready to make a move they made the playoffs last year and uh they 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 want to be better so yeah. this is going to be a huge test for those guys and from a limerick standpoint you know be able after last week they got nothing to lose they know no. they got nothing to lose no definitely you know, not so, they're gonna i think they, they just have to go out and they just have to go out and play that's all they have to do i think all the pressure is on the trojans in this one like i mean of course limerick want to be competitive and they want to lay down their marker which i think they i think to a certain extent they put the league on notice a little bit last weekend so if they even come close to pushing the trojans this weekend it's it's going to be it's going to be all eyes on limerick Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I guess that's a, a fun thing with the way the schedule was devised. Maybe we'll see. You know, I mean, when you have teams like, <laughs> you know, Limerick, Belfast, or Limerick, and, and uh, the Trojans, and the Panthers, and the Minotaurs, and you know, th- those two games last week. You know, the, especially the UCD Rebel game on the other side of things. You know, the schedule seems to be pretty up for, for, at least fun for us to watch. You know, yeah. at least fun for. For, for for folks to watch, I know. Again, I mean, uh, people may or may not know, but I'm involved with the with, with the South Dublin Panthers, the Panthers, and for me, it looks fun to watch, even though I am involved with it. You know, win or lose, like that's a great game. The Panthers Minotaurs coming up is a, is a great first test for these two teams, right? Yeah. Because they're both, and this Limerick Trojan game is a great second test for for Limerick again, back to back weeks. But it looks like there, you know, looks like there's some fun scheduled games that came up these first two weeks, and I'm I'm excited for them. And again, back to Limerick, I think they got some real talent. Mm. I think not not that there aren't a lot of teams that have real talent, but I think that they have premier a, a few premier level, you know, talent guys that can bring bring the rest of them with them and take them on their back. And it's going to be a fun season for them at the least. But it's, it'll be it'll be interesting for them, but they're getting two really good games to start out with, and I'm excited for them. Speaking of that that uh, Panthers and Minotaurs game, that's actually where I'm going to be in, in Trinity this weekend. So looking forward to seeing yourself in the flesh for the first time, and I, and I don't know how long. I'm looking forward to catching up with you in person. But let's kind of move away from the fixtures now a, a little bit and, and talk about something that you brought to my attention earlier on in the week when we were, we were chatting about what we're going to talk about, and that is the fact that the the Irish American Football League is celebrating a an anniversary this year, I believe, for forty years in existence. Uh, I think so too. I mean, I think that there was a it folded and then restarted and folded and restarted maybe once or twice in there. But I think from what I read, uh, remember that 
growth of a game blog from back in the day when we were all, when you were still playing and I was coaching. Uh, I think I got it from that site actually, uh, but I think that's taken off of other sites. But um, I want to say that the original organization, my, I don't know if it was two teams, but the original organization was, uh, was started in 1984. So wow. it's a 40 year anniversary. So, you know, it, it's a, uh, it, that's got to feel special. There are guys around that were part of that and made that made that happen. And it, it must be cool to be some of them to see what where it's come today. Uh, but yeah, forty years, man, forty years. That's crazy. And it, it's it's mad to think how far the league has come. I mean, and, and it's like even even the idea that organized kitted American football has been in existence in Ireland for forty years. I mean, and you look at the the developments between now and then and even the growing popularity of the game. But it's also great to see some of the, I suppose, the original teams. I mean, you look at the Craig Alvin Cowboys who released some pretty new sweet uniforms during during the week. So excited to see how they look in person. I mean, they were the one of the original um, Irish-American football teams. So the fact that they're still around, and I think even possibly still being coached by, by, by Greg Lockhart, who was probably around that time as well. I mean, that's pretty cool as well. Absolutely. Uh, the thing I could say about, again, this is from limited knowledge, but just from my own personal looking at it from a helicopter point of view, is that the Cowboys seem to have handled their this adversity that they had going down really, really well. Like they, they, I, I don't know what happened, but from that standpoint, um, they look like they're trying to really rebirth and, and come out of the ashes, Phoenix out of the ashes kind of thing with that stuff. And but they're also doing it in the right way. I mean, they're, they're, I listened to a couple of them on a few podcasts, you know, over this week, and uh, they're saying the right things. And it looks like they're trying to do the right things. And they understand they understand what happened to them. And so they saw the pitfalls of what happened to them. And if they want to get back up there, they know where they need to improve. And hopefully, you know, best of luck to them. I hope they can. But you're right. Like they were one of the they were one of the original teams. I think they played in the original championship game uh, against the Dublin Celts or something. Right. I think is what what I remember reading it in that initial 84 season. So uh, it's really impressive to see what I see about how they handle it and they they look like they're really enjoying themselves from, again, from what you see on social media and what you what you kind of hear and the temperature that you take from. So, I mean, you've obviously, like myself, you've been around the league for you know, quite some time now. What do you think or what do you think has been some of the key things that have that have contributed to the league being able to make it 40 years in more or less in one piece and to be at the position that it's at now? I think um, I, I may have even said this to you before, but I, what I think, I, I think it takes a village. You know, I think it took, you can't just do it with a, a core group of a couple of people. Now they're the driving force behind things, but you have to have some sort of, you know, uh, buy-in to get growth, to, to make it, to get it bigger. And I think that the league went through, um, probably as any volunteer organization, it went through uh, some turmoil and upheavals and renaming and rebranding and all of the stuff to do it but there was always kind of a, it always grew as far as people who bought in bought into the process and bought into the the, the the understanding of what it takes to run a national sport even though it's a small sport even though it's you know one of you know even though it's growing and we talk about the growth the fact is you know that that this sport is this a blip on on sport yeah. around the country, you know, like the, the college game is amazing. So it was the largest, that Notre Dame game was the largest mm. ever movement of one group of Americans or something to somewhere else, not in wartime yeah. or something like that. You know, that, that 40,000 people came over Crazy. in one week to, to, and, and left it. And that's all, you know, well and good, but, um, and it's amazing. And that helps it. But, you know, you really need buy-in from everybody involved in understanding of what it's going to take to grow and vision in order to, to get that done. And so that has been superbly impressive. You know, it's been superbly impressive for me to see, you know, when I first started, 
when I moved to the country, you know, 12 years ago or, or, or so, and I started coaching kind of right away, almost, um, you know, the dragon team that I, that, that I started with, I, I literally looked up American football in Ireland because that's how you had to do it. It wasn't, there wasn't a whole that I didn't know about the buzz, you know, if there was one when I moved over. Um, and I found this team that was, literally hadn't scored points like they weren't winning they weren't doing you know it was it so so and it's come from there to now there's the we had just started they just started the second division but but even that had its real teething pains and and there were some issues with it but now it really seems like you know if they can keep that core group of teams together one or two may fall off and come back but they can keep that together then they can grow the membership and that's going to be the key to grow people to, to help support what's going on in the country. And that's what they've gotten up until this point. And so that's probably the key to yeah. where it's come, but it's also the key to where it goes. You yeah. know, it's also going to be the key to where it goes. And when you have a group of people that are volunteering for this and it's gotten the sports so big, so cool that it's gotten so big, but it's so big. And now there's flag and now there's European championships with flag. And now there's Olympics with, with flag. And now there's, which is an amazing thing. It's awesome, but it's gotten so big and unwieldy that that you know those people got a lot more work to do. <laughs> those people on the board, the people that are in the administrative points, they got a lot more work to do, and they're going to need as much support as they can get to do it. You know, or it could not be awesome. You know, it could not be great. They're going to have to manage it. And, that 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 could that uh, there's always a risk, you know. I I, I see it now. I, I'm on the board of an organization of of a team. I'm on that board, and I see now for the first time what it's like in some in that that those shoes. When yeah. I was a coach, as you may or may not know, but when I coached with the Panthers, the membership thing to me as the coach, I said I shouldn't be a member here because what if there's a problem with how I coach? Yeah. Or what if there's an issue on the field? I shouldn't be a member. And uh, so now I'm the chairman of a board of a really hard to run organization because you're always trying to, like, get people to buy in and row the boat, row the boat with you. And if you don't have that support, then that's when bad things can happen. Yeah. So, so it's going to be an interesting how we manage that growth is going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully a lot of fun. But it's going to be hard work and it's going to be interesting to see how that grows. <laughs> Uh, and I think, I mean, you talk about the awareness being key to the growth, and I think something that's definitely going to help the growth of the the domestic game, aka the Irish American Football League, America Football Ireland, is the recent mainstream media attention that the that the NFL in general has been receiving here, largely in part through the um, the inclusion of the the, the Irish lads in, in the NFL Combine recently. I mean, the, the former, well former indeed rugby and GA players who were who were taken to who were who were part of the uh, the NFL's international pathway program went over to the states to to train and then last weekend got um the opportunity to to kick at the to kick at the NFL combine and so i think that the mainstream you know rte joe.ie all of those outlets that were going oh oh hang on a second there's there's, there's irish lads playing american football i mean so I think any sort of positive media attention, I think even more so than the college games, even more so than the other stuff that's been going on, this has really kind of put American football in Ireland on the map. And you have to think that some of that will spill over and will encourage, hopefully, young young athletes um, to take up American football with their, with their local club, whoever that might be. I, I want fully want to agree with you. And I do agree with you as far as... Uh seeing what we're seeing with these fellas that are they're like, you know, how many players did the IPP actually bring in this year? It was like something like 10 players or something? Overall, I think, yeah. I think so, something like that. You know, and one of them was Louis Rissam. Like, so, yeah. so, so like, uh, you know what I mean? A world-class rugby athlete. And I, this is no knock to any of the other guys, but when you see that, and then you see four come from, came from Ireland, like, yeah. you're right. It's, when you look, you know, to see that is nothing short of like amazing. Like that's fantastic. That's awesome. I absolutely love it. But the the 
you know, the one question I have with that is that the getting people to play because of that, Mark, you know, I could be completely off base here, but uh, how much is that going to happen? Because the facts are when you look into it, right, when you look into this, those guys don't play American football. They yeah. didn't play American football. They're, they're actually there because – not not because they played American football, but because they played a sport where kicking is huge, yeah. enormous, and it's awesome. They played the Irish native sport mm. to 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 do it. And again, that's I, I, this isn't a knock on, on anybody or anything, but so I do question: is that the case, or are now our guys more kids going to play God that want to play American football because they think they could be a it kicker? Might have the, it might have the opposite and, effect. It not, might actually. They might could it, could it have the opposite effect that you know I I, I asked you after the after the Rebels uh, UCD game I texted you and I asked you how many how many extra points or how many field goals or something and I, I it was it was none and again and, and in fairness you messaged me back and you're right the Rebels were never known as no you know they were always known as these yeah. guys and I don't and I don't even know the data behind either team UCD might be like that too but that's the fact. The fact that the best two teams in the country played each other, scored 82 points, and didn't kick no. the ball between the uprights. A, no knock, but that's the fact. Which and is now we're talking because about they, the because they both have they, they both have punters, so that begs the question: If you have a punter, why not just why not work on your extra points? Why not work on your field goals? I mean, it's the same basic. I mean, I'm, well, I, I can't have... kick. I can't kick to save my life, but I mean, right. I'm, you're right, and that, and and I think, like I said to you before, you know, pitches were a problem this last month or so. Yeah. You know, like getting feel, getting that stuff. So, I, I would say that special teams was probably the thing that got pushed back. If these guys are losing losing training to to pitches not being available, or you know, special teams more than likely are the things that again, me, they would have been the you know, it's whatever it is, fifteen percent of the game or something. You do it 15% of the time, but when you have such few sessions to get started in the season, that's probably the thing that gets set back. And extra points of field goals are, you know, they look like they're simple, you know, because you just line everybody up really close together. But the reality of it is, it's, yeah, they're hard. They're they're hard to do, mm. and and no teams have kicking coaches probably, right? There are probably a few guys that know how to kick, and we've had some great kickers in this league over the last 12 years I've been associated. with. This is no knock on our kickers. We have some great kickers in this league, but um, you know you're going to get all that specialty kicking advice when you go play Gaelic football because yeah. that's what you do. You know when you play rugby because that's that's what you do, kind of. So it, it will be interesting to see. I could be totally wrong, and you know. Mm -hmm. uh, not and I, I still think it's great and it's good for the country, but I'm not sure how I don't know how much. And you know, this, the, I think that the Steelers, the Jaguars, uh, taking over these European countries that you know, the Jags with in, in North and the Steelers here in the Republic, I think that that to me is probably the key to the growth to trying to get, yeah, sort of to growth grow, out growing there, to aware, awareness, board, awareness to of the actual stuff sport. going on. I mean, Bringing bringing in bringing in fans who might not necessarily know about American football. So I think the key thing out yeah. of all of this is raising the awareness of the sport generally in Ireland. So people go, oh, okay, American football is now a thing here in Ireland because these big NFL teams are coming over and making a concerted effort to grow their fan bases here. Which hopefully, and I think to a certain extent, and and I know a lot of teams will latch onto this, but I think the teams themselves have to take the take the initiative and, and and mark it on the back of this and go yeah hi we're your local american football team uh come and play for us so definitely interesting to see what happens there yeah. i think i think the club i think from a league level that's where the the biggest uh gains could possibly be financially <laughs> i don't I mean, again i have no idea but if you know from a league level with these big teams coming in and holding these events and doing that stuff how can how can the league capitalize on that not necessarily with those teams but with american companies maybe that are yeah. here that are we all know that there's a lot of american companies that are here in ireland um 
can we, is there somewhere that we can hook in with them to help to finance it? Because it's an expensive sport. Yeah. This sport is fighting an uphill battle with expenses, you know, and nobody's playing on their own. No, not, not, I mean, don't get me wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but there are no American football purpose built practice game fields anywhere. You know what I mean? The closest thing you have is what you have kind of at UCD there. And even, I mean, Belfast does a great job and, and the Trojans do, all the teams do a great job, but we're, you know, in our situation, we play on a, on a, 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 a county council field. It's a gap pitch. You know what I mean? We, we, we play our games, try to play our games and good, from the Panthers and good, but we play, that's, and we're not, not really that much worse than anybody else when I talk yeah. around to the league to people I talk to. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, the, the teams are historically rained out and watered out. So we don't have that. We, and to try to tap into something to get to get that stuff kind of sorted might be the yeah. key. And the teams have to capitalize on that too locally within their area. Now there's no catchment, I wouldn't say, especially Dublin. There's no catchment areas. But, you know, it's not parochial like it is. So they have to get out there and just spread the word of their teams to get people to come. But like you said, there were fans there, right? There were fans at that game. So yeah, I mean that this is something that we we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on. But I know just from looking at social media that the the Jaguars at least and possibly the Steelers as well are are, are going to be running draft uh, events and activations around the country, which is great. I mean that's just gonna that's just gonna keep building the brand and keep building the sport. Well, look, I mean there's so many. There's such a huge, I think, year in store for for American football in Ireland, and um, both with the the domestic league and different events and. Just, I think we might even see one of the lads getting signed to a, to a, an NFL practice squad in the next couple of weeks. Fingers crossed. I think that would be absolutely massive. So we, we will definitely be keeping a close eye on that. As for the um, American Football Ireland League, keep, make sure to keep an eye on the Gaelic Greater and social media uh, next weekend. Uh, and uh, indeed, indeed, indefinitely for, for updates where we're going to have all the uh, all the news and all the reactions to, to that. So, Coach... Um, Look, I think I think we've uh, we've discussed plenty there. Let's let's leave it there. I was I was a pleasure to to have you on. I was a pleasure to talk to you. I will see you on Sunday, and uh, looking forward to catching up with you. No, absolutely. It was, it's always good talking to you about. And uh, see you Sunday. Good luck to everybody playing out there. Let's 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 have some more fun football like we did this week. All right, coach. Take care. You got it, sir.